You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Yeah, and I do want to get away. Man, has this been a whacked Wednesday. Y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3. And also, I can't even do the thing anymore. Oh, where? wait a minute. I just did it. <laughs> Yeah, RLM Radio, and I'm the crazy lady. I am your pilot. Be afraid. Buckle up, children. It's going to be a bumpy ride. (laughs) Oh, well, let's go see who all is out there in Radio Land. I know there's a bunch of RLM numbers out there, but let me check and see. Twitter, I gained a couple of followers on Twitter. Scary. I know. I'm above the 380 mark. (laughs) <laughs> Woo! yeah overachiever me there you go over here on mines don't know if there's anybody over here on mines because i think i actually forgot to share it that i'm on tonight <laughs> but that's okay if i don't mind it don't matter right right honey badger radio sweet i like honey badger <laughs> Um, let's see. Thank you, by the way, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate that over there on Twitter. And I see Vinny is over here as well. And, uh, let's see. Vinny's over here. And JJ's is over here. And God knows who else is over here. (laughs) There's a lot of people on Twitter. There's a lot of traffic going on on Twitter. And it's kind of like, whoa, dude. Seriously, I'm tired of Trump with Stillskin. Can we find something else to talk about? Oh, I know. Guns in Florida. Yeah, let's talk about them. Mm, yeah, well, we will here in just a minute. Over here on that Freedoms Network, the effing site. Yeah, where we unfuck the world. There you go. f bomb. so early in the night because I am an overachiever. I just shared this over there, as a matter of fact. And uh, we're going to just go here right quick. This is from the movie Ants. You know, a children's movie. From the children's movie. You know, it's for the children, don't you know? Let one ant stand up to us. And they might all stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if we ever let them figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line you industrious little ants you stay in line stay in line don't get out of line don't get out of queue you don't want to do that mmm yeah you know what you know who that was that's those leeches that be the blood suckers that suck the lifeblood out of all of us because we work our asses off trying to make a living go figure making a living you're already living what the hell why do you have to make one oh wait go create a life for yourself yeah that's another one of those fun ones don't you have a life if you're listening you probably do or not (laughs) depending on how you look at that get a life but yeah you're already making a living by living why do we have to have this monetary system i ask that all the time and nobody's really told me other than well that's just the way it's always been i'm so tired of that she ought just saying crap and i shut my freedoms network down the hell was i thinking (laughs) okay there i reopened it again what a bonehead okay over here on fakey book i see tom w is over here on fakey book hi tom w how you doing sweetheart hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous wackadoodle wednesday mine's been freaking whacked did i tell you that already yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> I uh, shared a meme over here on Fakie Book, and my youngest daughter saw it because I tagged her in it. Natch. And um, it says, uh, so I went on my annual physical the other day, and I had a bruised knee. And the nurse says, you know, to avoid any further injury at your age, you should really install a bar in your shower. And there is a picture of a shower with several wine bottles along the window ledge and a couple of wine glasses. And then it looks like a couple of bottle, little airport bottles of vodka as well. And, uh, yeah, I tagged my daughter in that. And she said she's not sure she would ever leave her shower. <laughs> I don't think I would. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's see. Where else am I at? I'm crazy. That's where I am. Over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be. Vinny has wood. Oh, Vinny. <laughs> I don't know that I want to hear about that, sweetheart. Hmm, okay, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see the most splendiferous spot in the whole wide world, Barman. Why is he splendiferous? Because I said so, that's why. Grimner is also here, who is the RLM god, don't you know? And Grimmy just shares me all over the place, and he's such a sharing guy, sharing me, and the rest of the world is going, why are you doing that to us? <laughs> and I just sit here and giggle. Because it's like, if I don't laugh at it, I would probably go all postal. That's a really old phrase for those of you that are younger and don't remember, you know, when people used to go into, the, postal workers would go into the post office and, oh, wait, that's that whole gun thing again. Yeah, it's the gun's fault. It's nothing to do with a deranged individual. Mm, your jokes are weak, Chloe. I don't know about that. What did Bob Seger make sound better? Mmm, they're chit-chatting over here. I see the lovely Moose Girl is over here as well. Hey, Moosey, how you doing, sweetheart? Hope you're doing awesome sauce. I know you are, because you're the moose, and that's just the way you roll. I know that. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and close Twitter real quick, because, ooh, Streisand cloned... Oh, Streisand cloned her dog. Thank God she didn't clone herself. Jeez. Thanks, Dennis Miller, for sharing that little tidbit. Yes. <laughs> okay, let me see this. Waco, when killing 17 children is celebrated. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Huh. But it's different because those people had those shiny little badges. You know, when you have a magic badge, you can do whatever you want. It's the way that works. You didn't know that, did you? Everybody's going to go out and buy shiny badges now so they can get away with this shit. Okay, I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here. Hi, Miss Kate. How are you doing, sweetie? I saw that you were a busy, busy girl this morning. I was pretty busy today, too. Hence the Whacked Wednesday. I see the lovely Beth Z is also in the chitty chat. Hey there, Beth. How are you? And looky there, Chalcedoni. Once again, the strong, silent type. I think I've seen Chalcedoni speak twice twice. Got a double dip and a Chloe. Speaking of twice. Hey, Miss Chloe, Chloe. And I'm here. Just an echo. Yoo-hoo. Free and slave, just in case you're listening or in case you listen later. This is a repeat, hon. <laughs> hey there, I be Don C. I'm glad you are enjoying your little bolt. I still have yet to see one of those live and in person. And I work at a Chevy dealership. Go figure. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is here. Hey, Java. I have Java in my cup, by the way. And JJ's is here. Hi, JJ's. How you doing, my crazy kilt-wearing friend? And Juana Taco. That does sound yummy, but you know what? I have an appointment tomorrow with Lisa B. I'm going to get my color done again because, well, my, my purple and my teal is fading. And I need more color. And I need some Lisa B time so we can chit-chat and be girl talk and stuff. And, yeah, so we're going to go to Build-A-Burger Night. Yay! And you know what that is? They have 25 different things that you can put on top of a burger. And, I mean, these burgers are massive. And um, then you get a never-ending basket of fries, which is like <laughs> we always just wind up with one basket of fries because we're so blottoed after the burger. But that's that's tomorrow night. Tonight is leftovers. Mm. 
Hi, P. Bunyan. How are you, Timber? And looky there, the lovely rain is in the house. Rain, honey, we need you to fall outside. We need some precip out here in the boonies. It's kind of dry. I also see the lovely RLM Fluke is here. Hi, Flukey. You do such a wonderful job. And Rob Works is here. Did I miss the bubbler, Rob? While I was busy pitter-pattering and doing all kind of other fun things, or maybe not so fun things, I think I missed the bubbler. Damn it. Oh, and Miss Kate fell out. Damn it. Looky there, I see Trust No One. Hi, Trusty, how you doing, hon? And Woodman is here. Woody, party, dude. Beetle, I see you, Beetle. How are you, hon? Hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. Holy crap, Anoli, I scrolled down and yoinks. I also see BTC Bob is in the house. Hey, Bob. Because children can't vote and can't control themselves. Uh, yeah, I'm a repeater. Ooh, that sounds naughty. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to move along. <laughs> Hi, Colfax 101. I see you're here, but marked away. Thank you, Rob, for that. I appreciate it. And uh, let's see, Dakota, way up in the Great White North, as well as Dima, which I have no idea where Dima's at. Frumpy is also in the Great White North. Hey, Frumpy, how are you? And Kozu is in the house. Hey, Kozu, 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 Kozu. And looky here, we got Meister Bra, two, three, and four. That's four. Four. For those of you that can't, can't count, that's four. <laughs> That's a lot of party. 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 Moy, 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 moy. Hi, Beetle. I'm waving at you. Uh, Mr. Asmodeus is also in the house, as well as Poxified and Pompopon Sauce, although they are marked away. Slim Jim Finn is here. Hey, Slim Jim. And looky there. Teddy, the cuddly one. Vinny! Ay, ay. Vinny, ay, 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 oh, is that like, I'm the Frito Bandito, and I'm here to say? <laughs> Just asking. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom Two. So, um, you thought all polling places had that rule about clothing and signs? What, what rule about clothing and signs? Uh, political clothing. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to do any kind of any of that stuff within so many feet of any polling area during the uh, time frame where you can do your voting and shit. But like, I really pay attention. I don't do that stuff. <clears throat> so, what is this Rob Works that you just shared? I'm clicking on things while I'm on the radio. Be afraid. And taking a drink of coffee. We must vote to ban swords in the city of Rome and let more barbarians in. Yes, there you go. Let's vote for it, okay? Rick'em, rack'em, rack'em, rack'em. Get that ball in, really. Fight! Okay. So, where do I want to go first? Mm, I put a lot of things in my in my pocket. Not necessarily all of them are for the radio because, well, I, I do run across things that are just for moi personally. But I saw this one over on Twitter, and I like Michelle Malk, and I don't agree with her all the time, but I do like her. She's kind of spunky. And uh, I'm curious, did they ever find out what, was it her little sister that was kidnapped? You know, she she tamed down considerably after that. So I'm wondering if that was one of those lovely little leeches that be warnings to her. We did this to your sister. Imagine what we'll do to you if you don't. That's kind of the way I look at it. Um, in any case, what she did was Broward County School District's corruption runs deep. Grand jury report blasts culture of malfeasance and, and misfeasance. Hmm... And you know, that looks really, really interesting, but I think I am going to, I'm going to share this link over in the RLM chat just because it looks interesting. But as I'm looking at it and I see a link off to the side, I know, I know, oh, Vinny fell out. Um, 
I had squirrel moments. You know me. I have a tendency to uh, squirrel. Um, oh. <laughs> Vinny, do you have wood you need to chop? Is that what's going on? I hope that's what's going on. In any case, there is a link off to the side of this that I want to go to because I like the headline. Homeschooling is not a crime. So let's go check that one out because I I would much rather do that than than the whole corruption, corruption, corrupt. Because we all know it's there. Do I really need to repeat and repeat it? I don't think so. So it's elementary. Education control freaks will use any excuse to crack down on competition. With 2 million K-12 through students now educated at home, including our ninth grade son, oh, booyah to you, sweetheart, the temptation to exploit the most marginal cases of alleged child abuse by homeschoolers has proven irresistible to statists, politicians, and government apologists. Yes, I see a flasher going on here. Yes. Ah, what's that? Oh, well, that doesn't surprise me, Frumpy. Not one bit. Yeah, Miss Miss Feasance, you know, she's she's kind of a she's one of them gals that you don't necessarily want to take home to mother, if you know what I mean. Grimmy. <laughs> okay, back to this. So take the case of David and Louise Turp uh, Turpin's 13 starving children reportedly found tethered to their beds after one of the siblings escaped and contacted police. Those people need to be taken out to the the uh, town. Oh, you know, they don't have the town square anymore. That really kind of sucks. And they don't have the stocks anymore either. And, you know, public humiliation works really well. It worked for my mom every time she wanted to straighten my sorry ass up. She was very good at it, let me tell you. But, <clears throat> the Turpins House of Horrors in Riverside County, California, grabbed international headlines and lured a parade of publicity hounds. Former neighbors in Texas claimed they suspected physical abuse by the parents, but did nothing at the time. Equally responsible, in my mind, if you suspect it, check it out. If you confirm it, do something. Lazy asses. Oh yeah, that's right. I don't want to be involved. Too late. You have a life. You are breathing. You are having to intermingle with others. Even hermits occasionally have to deal with another individual. So, you are already involved. Now, do something. Oy. Apparently, these um, thirsty fame seekers will, however, be appearing on Dr. Phil later this week to slurp up their 15 minutes of leechdom. I love the way you put that, Michelle. Thank you very much. I love that. 15 minutes of leechdom. Yes. They, they couldn't be involved to say anything or do anything at the time. But now, now that something else and now that much worse has occurred, oh, we're going to step up and say, well, you know, single finger salute going up here. Louise Turpin's half-sister, Teresa Robinette, who also sat on the sidelines for years, miraculously found the energy and motivation to wake up early for an interview on NBC's Today Show, where she gregariously gossiped about family secrets. Louise, 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 jeez, Louise, what the hell? Why didn't you step up? You know what? If one of my sisters would have done shit like that, you can bet your sweet ass they'd have been bitch slapped. I'd have been the bitch. They'd have been slapped. <laughs> that's just, that's how our family rolls. Sorry, I know. Violence. Yeah, well, you know, you abuse your child, especially within my earshot or my field of vision, you're going to have to deal with me. 
Another of Louise Turpin's sisters, Elizabeth Flores. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeez, Louise, I'm sorry. I was ripping on you, although you should be ripped on. Teresa, 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 Teresa. And now we've got Elizabeth as well. She dry cried and show sniffed on ABC's Good Morning America about her love for the Turpin children, whom she claims to have tried to Skype unsuccessfully for 20 years. Oh, that's how you call reaching out and touching and, and helping. I love them. How heroic of her. She also confessed that David Turpin allegedly spied on her while she showered, and you didn't dot him in the eye? Dot those eyes. You know, that's proper punctuation and all that. For some reason, it was more urgent for Flores to report this information to GMA anchor Robin Roberts and millions of strangers tuned into the boob tube than it was to tell her sister or her nieces and nephews or, ooh, wait, you know, authorita, you know, the ones with badges, those shiny badges. I'd have dealt with my sister directly if I had an issue like that. Hmm. Instead of training tough scrutiny where it belongs on the parents, relatives, and acquaintances of the alleged victims, California legislators and narrative-shaping liberal journalists have instead directed their wrath at homeschooling. Because, well, if they would have been schooled in the public school system, somebody would have seen something. I think somebody already saw something, and they was waiting for their 15 minutes of leechdom. The Turpins had filed required paperwork with the state, registering their supposed homeschool. Oh, they taught those children. They taught them well. Those children will remember those lessons for the rest of their lives. Yeah, it's the Sand Castle Day School, and they listed it as a private school. Well, isn't that special? Several court cases in California have upheld the right to homeschool. Why shouldn't you be able to? Just because you have one set of douchebaggery parents doesn't mean all of them are douchebaggery. Parents have the option to sign an affidavit establishing a home-based educational program, hire credentialed tutors, or register with an independent study program. Hmm, interesting. The deep, wide, and vast majority of homeschoolers nationwide are loving, excellent, and responsible instructors and parents. And you know, I know quite a few homeschooling parents that are just that. Yet, public school lobbyists have marginalized them as amateurs, weirdos, and menaces who don't have the intelligence to raise and educate their own children. Well, you know what? If they're teaching them, you know, actual necessary skills, you know, not just the reading, writing, and arithmetic, who the hell come up with that as three R's? Really? Obviously, someone didn't learn their spelling properly. How about respect and responsibility and resourcefulness? There's three R's you can teach your children. Hmm. Democratic legislators in California have sought to undermine homeschoolers' autonomy with intrusive legislation, such as a bill po proposed last fall that would have required parents to allow inspectors to search their residential bathrooms for state-mandated feminine hygiene products for female students. Those are those white chocolate bars, by the way, for those of you that don't know. They have those little dispensers in the bathrooms at school. Well, they used to. Now, I heard last year, or I read last year somewhere, that there are some schools that are putting them in the boys' room, too, because boys menstruate, too. That was their story. I'm not kidding. Honest to God. Research it. Don't make me do it for you. Apparently, in New York City, incompetent nanny state bureaucrats have routinely harassed homeschooling families and falsely accused them of educational neglect after losing their paperwork. Well, the dog ate it. It works the first time. After the first time, it really doesn't work so well. 
Homeschooling mom, Tanya Acevedo, who is suing the Big Apple, told CRTV.com program how bureaucratic snafus that classified her son as a truant led to a child protective services investigation. Ah, so, see, bureaucrats have snafus. They have a, that's what the rest of us call fuck-ups. And then guess who pays for it? <laughs> Not the bureaucrat, that's for sure. So, you start to question yourself as a parent when they come through those doors, she said. My child eats three meals a day. He's well taken care of. And I felt that there was no need for them to be knocking at my door. It was a really scary and really nerve-wracking experience, which I, I can understand that. I just, all I have to do is drive by a police car and my butt just starts puckering, you know, because I, I know they're going to try and change my name to Ben Dover. And I keep saying, no, I'm a girl. That's a boy's name. But for her crime of exercising educational self-determination, she was treated as guilty of child abuse until proven innocent because well you know that whole innocent until proven guilty that's just a bunch of smoke blown up your ass hence why my butt puckers whenever I see one of them I don't want smoke up my ass that is an exit only in any case the idea that there is something essentially sinister and crime enabling about homeschooling the weeks Damon Linker warned uh, darkly of the sickening danger of homeschooling, for example, and NPR invoked the specter of cult. Yeah. It betrays an all too common bias against paternal autonomy that ignores the government's gross misconduct. From coast to coast, child welfare agencies see parental neglect where none exists and conversely ignore abuse when it's under their employees noses there are multiple cases of that for you to check out for yourself too peeps trust me I'd oh god there's lots of them and they will just make you want to scream federal audits of child welfare bureaucracies in California and Texas last year found rampant failures to detect abuse investigate allegations and track referrals so it's not just the popo that don't want to go where it's dangerous don't you know we don't want to see that we want to accuse somebody that's really not doing anything wrong but we happen to disagree with you know their thoughts and so therefore we're gonna pick on them you know those people that just want to be left alone and they're taking care of their own we're gonna pick on them assholes moreover sexual abuse scandals have rocked inner-city schools suburban public school districts and very wealthy private schools alike in 2014 alone According to a former federal education official, Terry Abbott, there were 781 reported cases of teachers and other school employees accused of or convicted of sexual relationships with students. How many we have how many cases of parents that oh that's right, yeah. They were homeschoolers. Those evil homeschoolers that are not swallowing the propaganda swill. Mm. Yet, the vultures of political opportunism are using the plight of the Turpin children to impose expanded control over all homeschoolers in the Golden State. Why? Because it's California, that's why. California Assembly Member Jose Medina, who is a Democrat from Riverside, imagine that, plans to introduce a bill requiring that mandated reports designed or designated by the State Department of Education conduct annual assessments in all home schools. Yada, 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 blah, 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 more make work. Oh, wait, wait. 
That's those shovel-ready jobs that Dangleberry promised, aren't they? Too bad they're part of the government which really doesn't produce anything beneficial. Echoing Medina's concern for the lack of oversight in the state of California, currently has in monitoring private and home schools, liberal New Republic writer Sarah Jones decried how lax homeschooling laws protect child abusers. Really? Well, lax law enforcement, you know, these enforcers that will show up if you've got a joint and they'll throw your ass against the wall, but man, oh man, you have all kinds of credible claims that somebody's got a gun and they're going to get all crazy. It's like, no, we we got to go. We heard that there was a crime at the donut shop. They actually had day-olds. That's a crime. Mm. <sighs> yeah, she pivoted quickly from the Turpin tragedy to the attack on homeschool movements, academic achievements, and opposition to mandatory kindergarten. Now, I myself went to kindergarten. I, from what I remember, it was a rather enjoyable experience, except for when my, my kindergarten boyfriend moved to Texas. I was really, really crushed by that, and I ran away from kindergarten, and I got a half a block away. <laughs> I was very small. I couldn't move fast. And then the second time was when the girl that took naps beside me kept wetting herself. And she kept getting me wet and I kept getting in trouble for it. And then the teacher finally realized when the kids on either side of her were soaked all the time that maybe it wasn't us. <laughs> Those were the two traumatic moments of my kindergarten. But other than that, I remember fun. I remember coloring. So... In any case, gets down to, fundamentally, the Homeschool Crackdown Caucus views the very freedom to educate one's own children as a threat to government authority, which, <laughs> well, probably because it is. In the name of liberating the Turpin children, they seek to keep the rest of us homeschooling families in regulatory chains. Now, please, tell me again how free we are. I would love to know. We are so free. <laughs> and I do mean that we very inclusively. How many things can you do that you don't have to have some kind of registration or permit or whatever and you don't have to pay somebody in order to do so? Yeah. Hmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I got to go here. Thank you, Rob Works, for that one. What he shared over in the Aralama Numma 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 Num. Ooh. And Beth is joining a gun club. Yay. Or maybe not. I don't know. Thank you, Michelle Malkin, by the way. I do enjoy that one. I'm. I'm Mm. We already know that there is plenty of corruption in government, and that's because anytime you have any kind of institution that basically has power over another, you're going to have corruption. If the people that wish to be in there are not already corrupted, they soon will be because that power corrupts. There's got to be a little seed there for it to build on, but yes. Okay, we're going to do this one, just because. I think I'll even put that over here on mines, just because I do like that article. Okay, uh, hi Cowboy Tech, I see you over here on mines. Okay, Rob Works just shared this over here in uh, the RLM. It's from blacklistednews.com. Missouri man comes home to find girlfriend murdered in front of her two children, calls the police, and is charged with marijuana possession. Yeah, because, well, you know, that's what they do. Grrr. 
Now this is just a little blurby one, so where did it come from originally? It's um, an 18-year-old staying at a Missouri ranch for homeless boys has been charged with killing a woman whose body was found in a trailer home with her two unharmed children. Noah Kelliker was arranged or was arraigned Tuesday on charges of second-degree murder and three other felonies in the death of 21-year-old Cassandra White. Um, the Sedalia Democrat reports that White's body was found January 9th at the trailer park near Sedalia with the door shattered apparently by gunfire. Her baby was on the couch near her and a toddler was in the bedroom. Marijuana was found inside and her boyfriend is charged with drug possession. Calliker was arrested two days later at the Masters Ranch in Oregon County. Yes, so see what what good it does call 911 they'll arrest your ass too in that special apparently um oh and that is the extent of that then there's lots of other ones this is from the original was posted on dailystarjournal.com so and there's all kinds of lovely little news in that one mm. Lots of corruption, it looks like, is also there. We'll just put this one here, too. What's for dinner, Woody? Leftovers. Um, if you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. That's true. Groucho's right. Dun, 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 dun. Um... Okay. I was just catching up on the chat. Doing a quick perusal, don't you know? Uh, oh, crap. No, I need to go back. Cause <laughs> <laughs> me and my push and buttons. It gets me in trouble every time. Damn it. I'm going to put this over on the effing site. Yeah, you know, this is to, let this be a lesson to you. When you come home and find your sweetheart murdered, first, hide the pot. That's a sad lesson, but wow. Wow. This is like, oh, good Lord. Are you kidding me? Okay. And I'm going to find the little doper smoker dude, too, just because. Okay. I'm going to go to my pocket now. Because I do think I threw some stuff in here for tonight. Um, scientific secrets to hand. Ooh. Let's see. Okay. First off, I'm going to go to this one. This one is from From the Trenches. Um, and I did kind of sort of peek at it earlier today. Just kind of scrolled down because, well, street artist erects three billboards over Hollywood. Oscar for biggest pedophile goes to. Now, see, I saw that headline and I don't remember who shared it over in the RLM earlier today. But I just had to scroll down to see. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> had to see what these billboards looked like. And damn, I like them. In any case. This is from uh, The Hollywood Reporter by Paul Bond. With a nod to the Oscar-nominated three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, conservative street artist Sabo has hijacked, hijacked three billboards in Hollywood to attack the entertainment industry for allegedly shielding pedophiles. Reminiscent of the signage in the Martin Mc McDonough film? Hmm which is up for seven Oscars, including Best Picture, with black text on a field of red, three conservative or consecutive billboards in Hollywood sprang up Wednesday, each calling out the industry. One sign reads, And the Oscar for the biggest pedophile goes to... Dot, dot, dot. Another one says, We all knew and still no arrests. And the third billboard reads, Name names on stage or shut the hell up. Now, I can't argue with any of those. I kind of like them, actually. 
Until the artist, who goes by the name Sabo, took over the signage early Wednesday, the billboards were legitimate advertisements. Sabo manufactured fake overlays measuring as large as 48 feet across by 14 feet high and hired a crew of six men to help with installation. The first of the three massive signs appeared near the corner of Wilshire Boulevard and La Brea Avenue in Hollywood, and another was a hundred yards north. Still another appeared a few hundred yards from that one, mimicking the arrangement in the film where three signs appear in a row alongside a highway. Sabo has posted faux ads attacking Hollywood on other occasions, but he said he considers the hijacking of three giant billboards on a single day his largest mission yet. The last time he took over a billboard was in November when he altered a sign for the greatest showman to make it appear like Senator Al Franken was grabbing Zendaya, who starred as a trapeze artist in the movie. <coughs> Excuse me. Franken has since resigned from the Senate under allegations that he sexually harassed women, and nearly 100 other men in the entertainment industry also have been publicly accused of sexual misconduct since claims were made against Harvey Weinstein nearly five months ago. Sabo says that his signage is meant to criticize those who allegedly enabled sexual harassment with their silence, which there is no alleged about that. When you know and you keep silent, you are enabling. And to also tell celebrities that they should refrain from preaching during the Oscar acceptance speeches for this one year at least. Yeah. And if you aren't going to name names, shut the hell up. The Three Billboards, the movie, is considered a front runner for Best Picture at Sunday's Oscars, which I didn't even know they were coming up. I don't watch that shit anymore. This is also held at the Dolby Theater, which is a few miles from where Sabo took over the Three Signs on Wednesday. wonder if that was today. Let me scroll up and look. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. How funny. How funny. In any case, in the film, Frances McDormand plays a mom of a raped and murdered daughter who posts billboards with angry messages aimed at the cops in her small town because she thinks that they have not done enough to pursue whoever assaulted and killed her daughter. Still no arrests? Reads one of the billboards in the film with black letters and a solid red background. And you know what? I don't recall hearing anything about arrests. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you, Rob Works. I think you were the one that f uh, posted this earlier today in the Arlamanumanum. Not positive, but that is one of the sites that you have a tendency to go to. We'll just do that. Let me see what else is going. Quack, 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 quack. Grammy, are you having duck soup tonight? Ooh. Woody. Dang. Bite its head off and shit down its neck? Damn, dude. You feeling frisky. Okay. So, let me see here. Back to my pocket I go. Because I do have another one. This is another snarky one. Because, you know, I like my snark. I really do. This is from the dailysheeple.com. And I believe I also got this one from over on the R aluminum. See, I, I, I didn't do an awful lot of cruising, perusing, but I do pull links off the R aluminum. So, from the Daily Sheeple, from today. Armed and dangerous. If police don't have to protect the public, what good are they? Excellent question. Excellent question. After a shooting spree, they always want to take the guns away from the people who didn't do it. I sure as hell wouldn't want to live in a society where the only people allowed guns are the police and the military. 
That's from William S. Burroughs. So, in the American police state, police have a tendency to shoot first and ask questions later. Mm -hmm. In fact, police don't usually need much incentive to shoot and kill members of the public. Police have shot and killed Americans of all ages, many of them unarmed, for standing a certain way or moving a certain way or holding something, anything, that police could misinterpret to be a gun, possibly even a Pop-Tart. Or igniting some trigger-centric fear in the police officer's mind that has absolutely nothing to do with an actual threat to their safety. In recent years, Americans have been killed by police merely for standing in a shooting stance holding a cell phone, behaving oddly and holding a baseball bat, opening the front door, ooh, God, that would scare me, or running in an aggressive manner. Well, if you see me running, <laughs> it's aggressive to get away because I don't run. Or holding a tree branch. How about crawling around naked? Wow, you know, that could be terrifying depending on the person. Like if it was Michael Moore crawling around naked. Ew, ew. How about hunching over in a defensive posture? That's very intimidating, don't you know? Wearing dark pants and a basketball jersey. That would be pretty scary to someone who's afraid of dark pants and pet fur on their dark pants. Maybe. Driving while deaf. Ooh, that's very intimidating. How about being homeless? That would do it. Or brandishing a shoehorn. Ooh, I'm going to make your shoe slip on easier. Wow, that's pretty scary. How about holding a garden hose? Now, wait a minute. I got whooped with a garden hose when I was younger. That's not fun. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Peeing outdoors. Oh, crap. My grandchildren would be in trouble especially out here in the boonies, because they're encouraged. Don't be running back in the house. You can go out here. So, when police in Florida had to deal with a 19-year-old embarking on a shooting rampage in inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, what did they do? Well, uh, gee, uh, like, it was loud and you know loud noises really reverberate and echo for those that don't understand what reverberate means that's a really big word multiple syllables but it, it's very noisy and so i stayed outside and did nothing yeah there were four armed police officers, including one cop who was assigned to the school as a resource officer on campus during that shooting. All four cops stayed outside the school with their weapons drawn because it was really scary. Three of them even hid behind their police cars because they were really scared and they probably whittled their pants and everything. Good thing they had dark pants on so you couldn't see. Not a single one of those cops, armed with deadly weapons and trained for exactly such a dangerous scenario, entered the school to confront the shooter. Seventeen people, most of them teenagers, died while the cops opted to not intervene. Let that sink in a moment. Just a moment. Do, 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 do. Yeah. By the way, uh, Supreme Court ruled that, you know, SCOTUS, they ruled that, that they don't necessarily have to serve and protect. You do know that, don't you? Well, <clears throat> now before the outrage bubbles over, consider that the, yeah, here we go. The Supreme Court has repeatedly affirmed, most recently in 2005, that the police have no constitutional duty to protect members of the public from harm. Yeah. It's not stipulated in the Constitution. Of course, you know, in order for it to get to the Supreme Court, it has to be a matter of constitutional legality. Just putting that out there, too. According to the U.S. Supreme Court, police have no duty, moral or otherwise, to help those in trouble, 
protect individuals from danger, or risk their own lives to save we the people. It doesn't. It probably doesn't say that in the Constitution, so they probably are correct. But Constitution, that is immaterial. It's supposed to be the individual police departments. And obviously, this one in Florida doesn't have that as a rule. In other words, you can be outraged that cops in Florida did nothing to stop the school shooter, but technically wasn't part of their job description, according to the Constitution. I'm thinking maybe those that wrote that document put those squiggles and lines on a piece of sheepskin or whatever the hell they wrote it on, parchment paper, that they really, you know, that thought just did not enter into their mind that, wow, those that are supposed to protect don't. That just, I don't know that that thought actually entered into their mind. Call me crazy to question that. This does beg to question, though. If the police don't have a duty to protect the public, what are we paying them for? And who exactly do they serve, if not you and me? Well, they are law enforcement officers. They are not police. They are not peace officers. They are law enforcement officers. They are the strong arm, the ankle breakers, the arm breakers, the head busters, the shooters for the law and those who write it. So why do we have more than a million cops on the taxpayer funded payroll in this country whose jobs do not entail protecting our safety? Maintaining the peace in our communities and upholding our liberties. I think I've covered that. They are law enforcement officers. When you change the title and add more syllables, it completely changes the job description. Why do we have more than... Uh, a million cops who have been fitted out in the trappings of war, drilled in the deadly art of combat, and trained to look upon every individual they interact with as an armed threat, and every situation as a deadly force encounter in the making. Why do we have that? Number one, because the military industrial complex just plain isn't disposing of all of the munitions and garb fashion statements that they create every year in order to, um, you know, earn their keep, in their minds at least. And so in order to use up some of this surplus, well, they pass it on down to the popo. And then they train them how to use it because you don't want to have a bunch of incompetent asshats running around with badges and highfalutin guns shooting themselves in the foot. Although, if you look, there are instances of that as well. I can recall one that was in front of a classroom of students. Yeah. Doesn't make any difference how much you train them. You're still going to have incompetent asshats. I see a flash in. What's going on here? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, cowboy, yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see. Where are we at? Oh, now this author is going to tell us why. It's the same reason why the trump silskin administration has made a concerted effort to expand the Popo state's power to search, strip, seize, raid, steal from, arrest, and jail Americans for any infraction, no matter how insignificant. Why? Because there are so many freaking laws on the books that one individual would never make it all the way through reading them all. And another reason why they will never make it through reading them all is because they add more every year. So everything you do is some kind of an infraction. Everything. So you may as well enjoy it. You're a criminal already, so have a good time with it. This is no longer a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Hasn't been for a long time. It's fast becoming a government of the rich, by the elite, 
for the corporations. I truly, I'm going to have to reword that. The leeches, not elite. They are not elite by any stretch of the imagination. And they may have an awful lot more monetary value on paper, but that doesn't mean that they really are rich because I consider myself quite wealthy and I don't have a lot of on paper. But they are the leeches, the blood-sucking leeches that be. And for the corporations, because corporations were given personhood by SCOTUS. Oh, and its rise to power is predicated on shackling the American taxpayer to a life of indentured servitude. That was done years ago, sweetheart. And it's still going. Hi, Miss Chloe. Yeah, I know Rob never was. So... Cops in America may get paid by the citizenry, but they don't work for us. No, they don't. They don't answer to us. They're not loyal to us. Why? Because they're law enforcement officers. That little oath that they take at the beginning, that's like, you know, okay, you have to say this. You have to say these words in order for us to start giving you a paycheck, but you don't have to pay attention to what you're saying. And they certainly aren't operating within the limits of the Constitution. Because if they did, honestly, if they did, in their oath, which I took that same oath when I, was vo when I got sworn in on city council, you are to uphold the Constitution of the United States and where I reside, the state of Kansas. That's part of the oath. Obviously, that gets thrown out once you get the accoutrements of the job. That thin blue line of loyalty to one's fellow cops has become a self-serving apparatus that sees nothing wrong with advancing the notion that the lives and rights of police should be valued more than citizens. Well, yes, because they are useful little tools, and that's what they are. They are tools of the lawgivers. Note they call them lawgivers and lawmakers. They never refer to themselves as lawbreakers. Huh, imagine that. As one commentator remarked, protect and serve are the words we see on the side of many police cars and is the motto of most police forces. The words define the mission of the police, which is to protect citizens and serve the public. However, it has become increasingly clear that in far too many police forces, these words have been twisted beyond recognition. No, those words are put on there to give you that false sense of security. Because that's the only security you're going to get around them, is that false sense of it. Too often they appear to mean to protect officers and serve the police force, or those that sign their paychecks. Force protection has become the primary motivating force for many in the police. That term is actually a military concept, which means that they do everything you can to protect the troops when planning and executing a combat mission. And every time they go on duty, it is considered a combat mission. The myth of the hero cop really is a myth. If they were a hero cop, they would call they would be calling out the dirty cops. They would be saying no to un unconstitutional laws, which basically means that they would no longer be cops. So by that process, they really aren't hero cops their hero former tried to do the right thing and if they're lucky they live through it. Cops are no more noble and no more self-sacrificing, no braver and certainly no more deserving of special attention or treatment than any other American citizen. Note they keep saying citizen which means you belong. Once you belong you are no longer sovereign. 
putting that out there too. Yet, as journalist David Fe um, Feige explains, I think that's, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not. For the last three decades, Popo unions have managed to portray their members as indispensable heroes in the deadly and dangerous war. In the years since September 11 attacks, the story of the hero cop has become so powerful and pervasive that even questioning Popo behavior is decried as disloyal, un-American, and dangerous. Hmm... This misplaced patriotism about Popo and, by extension, the military, a dangerous reshifting of the nation's priorities that's been reinforced by POTUS Trumpelstilskin with his unnerving knack for echoing past authoritarian tactics paves the way for even more instability in the nation. Yeah, well, I think Trumpelstilskin saw the full Zapruder film. So, you know, he could have all that bluff and bluster, although, you know, what politician doesn't have bluff and bluster when they're trying to get the job? Once they actually get the job and find out what all it entails and find out the repercussions of if they actually do what they want to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Mm, yeah, I think Trumples is doing what saves Trumples ass is what I think he's doing. In any case, Fige continues there are real-world harms that follow with the myths perpetrated by police unions. Arguments about the dangerous nature of police work drive the increasing militarization of police departments. The life-and-death nature of the job is used to push for extremely generous medical leave, overtime, and pay packages. Most insidious of all, the extravagant danger and trumped-up heroism drives an us versus them mentality that suffuses contemporary big city policing and bleeds into the criminal justice system, causing systematic imbalances that chronically favor the popo over citizens. Together, this creates a sense of invincibility. I am super popo and righteousness among the popo that is used to justify even outrageous behavior while simultaneously creating the perception among the public that the popo are untouchable. Hence, the need for the Second Amendment, a well-armed, well-trained militia. And you and I are that militia. For years now, we've been told that cops need military weapons to wage the government's war on drugs, crime, and terror. Although the government is the ones that's bringing in the drugs and dealing the drugs, they are the biggest criminals on the planet. And who's the biggest perpetrator of terror? Why those fear-mongering, fear-porn propagandists in government? Ah. Well, I think if the cops really wanted to go after and truly wage a war on drugs, crime, and terror, they would go after everyone in government, you know, guilty until they prove themselves innocent, just like the rest of us. We've been told that cops need to be able to crash through doors and search vehicles, carry out roadside strip searches, shoot anyone they perceive to be a threat, and generally disregard the law whenever it suits them because, well, they're doing it to protect their fellow Americans from danger. Danger, real wa Will Robinson. Danger. 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 Mmm, yes. Sure they do. We've been told that cops need extra legal protections because of the risks they take. Did you know that being a dentist <laughs> is actually a pretty tough job as well? And there, oh, this was several years ago. I could be wrong now. You know, I think holistic doctors have a higher suicide rate quote-unquote suicide for that one, by the way. But dentists used to have the highest suicide rate in the nation. <clears throat> Of course, none of this is true, and for the record, any police officer who tells you that he needs tanks, SWAT teams, and pepper spray to do his job shouldn't be a police officer in the Constitutional Republic, although this has not been a Constitutional Republic for quite some time, sweetheart. 
quite some time. Unfortunately, we the people don't get to call the shots anymore, and we no longer live in a constitutional republic. Okay, thank you. I should have just shut my mouth and finished reading. Whoa, wait a minute. How do I do? Never mind. Moving along. <laughs> Welcome to America, the police state, funded by corporate America. Booyah! Police by the military industrial complex and empowered by politicians whose primary purpose is to remain in office, aka keep sucking on the public tit. Are you getting tired of it yet? You starting to get stretch marks? I'm getting sore. It's a short hop, skip, and jump from the Popo state we're operating under right now to a full-blown totalitarian regime ruled with an iron fist of martial law. Actually, right now we got martial law. It's they're, they're still using their kid gloves on us. That iron fist is going to come out here soon, I'm sure. Or they're going to try to, at least. The groundwork's already been laid, you know. The events of recent years have only served to desensitize the nation to violence, acclimate them to the militarized police presence in their communities, and persuade them that there is nothing they can do to alter the seemingly hopeless trajectory of the nation. Yes, there is something you can do. You can take it upon yourself to not do harm, to honor all contracts, to not tell lies, do not steal from another, whether you're stealing their life, which is murder, stealing their things, which is burglary, stealing their good name, which is slander. You know, all of those are a form of theft, the stealing their innocence or their security and control of their own body, which is rape. <sighs> the surveillance or the invasive surveillance the extremism reports, the civil unrest, the protests, the shootings, the bombings, the military exercises, the active shooter drills, the color-coded alerts, and the th threat assessments, the fusion centers, the transformation of local police into extensions of the military, the distribution of military equipment and weapons to local police forces, the government databases containing the names of dissidents and potential troublemakers. I'm sure I'm in there somewhere. You know, all of those things are symptoms of a dis-ease. And the dis-ease is, and you're not going to like this, it is the lack of personal responsibility. That's the disease. And the whole fucking country's got it. The whole country. You think that you got to call somebody to save the day. You think that somebody else is going to fix it instead of you pulling up your big boy tidy whities or your big girl panties and confronting whatever it is, be it your neighbor or what have you. Not taking personal responsibility. That's the disease. The thinking that someone else will take care of it for you without any negative repercussions. That is part of the disease. Heal yourself, people. The sight of police clad in body armor and gas masks, wielding semi automatic rifles, and escorting an armored vehicle through a crowded street. A scene likened to a military patrol through a hostile city. It no longer causes alarm among the general populace, which I do have to tell you, after listening to Stephen Crowder, every rifle is a semi automatic. You know, unless it's fully automatic. Handguns are semi-automatic. You know, so them wielding a semi-automatic, if you've got a rifle, you've got a semi-automatic. It may not be the same kind as they've got, but semi-automatic is a very wide range. From what I understand from Stephen Crowder. Louder with Crowder. I like him. He's funny. In any case, back to this. <clears throat> Few seem to care about the government's endless wars abroad that leave communities shattered.
families devastated, and our national security at greater risk of blowback. Which, by the way, if you want to have fewer refugees, quit making them homeless. They will stay home if you quit bombing the shit out of their home. <laughs> I know that's it's a really weird chain of logic there, but it works for me. Indeed, there were no protests in the streets after U.S. military forces carried out a strike on a Syrian settlement, killing 25 people, more than half of which were women and children. I don't seem to recall there being any kind of massive protests in the streets after Waco either. And there were lots of people killed there. But wait, that was done by people with badges. Moving along. And then, you know, there's POTUS Trumple Stilskin's plans for a military parade on Veterans Day, costing between 10 million and 30 million to showcase their nation's military might. In other words, penis envy. You know, guys that really aren't very well endowed in that area, whether it be. Um, their equipment or their usage of that equipment, they have a tendency to go for the flashy. <laughs> this is just going by my own personal experience, limited though it may be. If you have to have a Corvette all the time, I got a Corvette, baby. Yeah, well, that means you got a little dick. <laughs> or you don't know how to use it. That's my personal opinion. Apparently, other countries that feel the need to flex their military muscles to its citizens and the rest of the world include France, China, Russia, and North Korea. In other words, there's an awful lot of testosterone floating around saying, Look at my toys. I've got a big gun. Want to see me wave it around? I parade it down the streets. No, thank you. Connect the dots, people. This stealthy creeping silent coup that is the same danger that writer Rod Serling warned against in the 1964 political thriller Seven Days in May, which put the military in charge of a coup that would institute martial law packaged as a well-meaning and overriding concern for the nation's security. Yeah, on the big screen, the military coup is foiled and the Republic is saved in a matter of hours. In the real world, however, the plot thickens and spreads out over the past half century. Actually, sweetheart, over the past couple of centuries, but ah, what's a few hundred years here and there? We've been losing our freedom so incrementally for so long sold to us in the name of national security and global peace. And if you don't believe in our story about global peace, instead of spelling it P-E-A-C-E, -E, we will bomb you into global pieces, P-I-E-C-E-S. Oh, and this is maintained by way of martial law, disguised as law and order. Why, they even have a TV show named that and enforced by a standing army of militarized police and the political leeches determined to maintain their power at all costs. Once again, I refer you to that little meme that I read at the beginning of this broadcast. Keep the ants in line. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint exactly when it all started going downhill. But we're certain that downhill trajectory now, and things are moving fast. Yes, they are. The question is no longer whether the USA government will be preyed upon and taken over by the military and industrial complex. That's a done deal. That's been over and done and inked, I think, even before Truman, as a definite <clears throat> Definitely before Truman. Definitely. So, we've allowed ourselves to be acclimated to the occasional lockdown of government buildings, 
Jade Helm materi uh, military drills in small towns so that special operation forces can get realistic military training in hostile territory and live active shooter drill training exercises carried out at schools and shopping malls and on public transit and you know these can what do they do is they they do fool law enforcement officials and students and teachers and bystanders into thinking it's a real crisis and then once you cry wolf so many times then when it really is a wolf guess who's the lamb that's led to slaughter so can't say we weren't warned back in 2008 an army war college report revealed that widespread civil violence inside the United States would force the defense establishment to reorient priorities in extremes to defend basic domestic order and human security. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of gobbledygook there. The 44-page report went on to warn that potential causes for such civil unrest could include another terrorist attack, could, might, almost, maybe, kind of, sort of, possibly, unforeseen economic collapse, unforeseen, as if people can't see it coming down the pike, loss of functioning political and legal order, <laughs> that was lost a long time ago, Purposeful domestic resistance and insurgency. Oh, <laughs> hmm. Pervasive public health emergencies. Yeah, thanks for all the tic tac toe in the sky, by the way, boys. And catastrophic natural and human disasters. Once again, thanks for all the tic tac toe in the sky. And the harp, too, by the way, assholes. In 2009, reports by the Department of Homeland Security, Homeland Security, that has a familiar ring to it. Hmm. These surfaced that labeled right-wing and left-wing extremists as military and military veterans as extremists, <laughs> aka terrorists. You know why they are labeled terrorists? Because they scare the shit out of those that are trying to control and wanting to keep control and called on the government to subject such targeted individuals to full-fledged pre-crime surveillance thought police almost a decade later after spending billions with the B to fight terrorism which <laughs> yeah they're fighting it real good they're fighting on both ends against the middle and guess what we get asshats to the left of us and jokers to the right, and I'm stuck in the middle with you. Mm, yeah. The DS DHS concluded that the greater threat is not ISIS, but the domestic right-wing extremism. Yeah, because those left-wing extremists, you know, those uh, assholes that seem to think that it's okay to come up, tell you that you are doing violence against him if you don't use the proper pronoun. You. And they can come up and they can touch you and they can get right in your face and they can say all kind of offensive things to you. And yet if you rebut them, you are the dangerous one. Yeah. Those left-wing extremists are not exactly a walk in the park either. And yet, you need both wings in order for the story to fly, don't you? Uh-huh. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the government's been amassing an arsenal of military weapons for use domestically and equipping and training their quote-unquote troops for war. Even government agencies with largely administrative functions such as the Food and Drug Administration, Department of Veteran Affairs, and the Smithsonian have been acquiring body armor, riot helmets, and shields, cannon launchers, and police firearms and ammunition. Okay, those things may have been charged to those departments, but having served on city council, since those are all considered part of the general ledger, if you have one department that has leftover funds before the end of the budget year, 
and you have another department that is needing something, you can borrow from the budget of it so long as it is within the general ledger. It's called accounting and it's very creative. So not necessarily, I'm, I'm sure the Food and Drug Administration does have that stuff. I'm sure the Department of Veteran Affairs does have that stuff. Smithsonian, nah, they use their budget. Just like they use their budget out of Social Security Administration. Yeah, which is bankrupt, by the way. In fact, in case you didn't know, there are now at least 120,000 armed federal agents carrying such weapons who possess the power to arrest. But what you don't realize is you have the power to arrest as well. They don't have to acknowledge it or abide by it because, well, you know, they have shiny badges. But citizen's arrest is, is a real thing. This rounding out this uh profit-driven campaign to turn American citizens, a.k.a. not sovereigns, into enemy combatants and America into a battlefield is the technology sector that has, uh, has been colluding with the government to create a big brother that is all-knowing, all-seeing, and inescapable, which is why that wonderful poster from back in the early 70s, that's the first time I saw it, blacklight poster, of the eagle coming down and the little mouse looking up and flipping the bird, the last act of defiance. Do not ever get rid of that single finger salute because you may need to use both hands. Yeah, it's not just the drones or the fusion centers, or the license plate readers, and the stingray devices, and the NSA that have you have to worry about. You're also being tracked by the black boxes in your cars, your cell phones, smart devices in your home, grocery loyalty cards, social media accounts, credit cards, streaming service, services such as Netflix, Amazon, and ebook reader accounts. I'll bet they're enjoying the hell out of the shit I watch because I get rather random. All of this has taken place right under our noses. Funded with our taxpayer dollars. No, sweetheart, our taxpayer dollars go directly to the interest to the Fed, a privately owned banking corporation. None of our taxpayer dollars go to this, but that's a whole other rant. And this is carried out in broad daylight without so much as a general outcry from the citizenry. It's astounding how convenient we've made it for the government to lock down the nation. And they do have it locked down. Do you have a passport? Show us your papers. Mind you... By government, quote-unquote, I'm not referring to the highly partisan two-party bureaucracy of rebloodlicans and demon craps. As I pointed out in my book, Battlefield America, The War on the American People, I'm referring to government, quote-unquote, with a capital G, the entrenched deep state that is unaffected by elections, unaltered by populist movements, and has set itself beyond the reach of the law. So they think. There is natural law. I'm referring to the corporatized, militarized, entrenched bureaucracy that is fully operational and staffed by unelected officials who are, in essence, running the country and calling the shots in D.C., no matter who sits in the White House. Sorry, Trumples, you are just the target. Sorry, Trumples, you are the sacrificial lamb. No different than Dangleberry was. No different. This is the hidden face of government that has no respect for freedom of its citizenry. And I'm sorry, but citizenry cannot have freedom because to be a citizen, you must be owned by or be a member of. They have no respect for the freedom of the sovereigns that live on this piece of dirt. This was contributed by John W. Whitehead of the Rutherford Institute. Thank you, John W. Whitehead. 
I'm going to go ahead and share this. Wow, that was a rather long debacle, don't you think? Although I do enjoy the Daily Sheeple. Uh, you plural, not you, you. Ah, there's lots of you, 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 yous. There's lots of yo-yos out there, too. Uh, I know, Beetle, I'm catching up on the chat. And yeah, people people look up at that and they just really don't stop and realize that that shit that's up there, you know, until you start connecting the dots for them. And a lot of the people that I associate with are connecting those dots, but there's an awful lot more that I don't associate with that I have no clue if they connect those dots or not. But one of the perks of where I work is that I do get to see people from across the country. And it, you'd be surprised. There's an awful lot more out there that are questioning. They just need a little prodding to, hey, speak up. Do something. Doesn't have to be something big. It really doesn't. Because a ripple in the ocean can be started with a pebble. So... And each one of you are little pebbles that are getting ready to do a belly flop in that ocean. Look at it like that. You know, whenever somebody says somebody ought to do something, we are all somebody. And maybe we ought to do what is best for ourselves and our loved ones without intentionally causing harm to another. I got to put that proviso in there because there's always going to be someone out there that, well, this is what was best for me. I stole my neighbor's shit. Yeah, thanks, asshole. You just made the rest of us look bad because that's what they do. The one aw shit negates the 99 attaboys. Hey. Yes, I see the flasher going on over here. Um, why I don't think John W. Whitehead said, <laughs> no, I don't think he said Dangleberry, but you know, I, mm. <laughs> you're right there, Frumpy. <laughs> I have my pet names for those that wish to have that position. And I truly, I really, honest to God, pity them. Because, man, they think they're going to get in there and be doing all kind of things. I'm going to kiss babies. I'm going to fix the world. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then they get in there, and then they get showed the Zapruder film. And then they go, oh, shit. <laughs> then they realize that that really fancy-schmancy-looking car that they're riding in is a tank. Because everybody's gunning for their ass. Yeah, really? Be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it, and it's going to suck. Whew, is it going to suck. And speaking of those that like to point out suckage, hey, pigster guys, these crazy guys over on PIGazette.com, their word of the day, which is actually a phrase of the day, Second Amendment. A sovereign individual's last line of defense, this legacy from the Founding Fathers, is all that stands between you and the homegrown neo-Marxist tyranny that stalks your liberty. Uh, I, I have a hard time arguing with that. In their quotable quotes section, Why are we talking about the NRA? Because the Democrats keep bringing up the NRA. Because the crony capitalists, these phony corporations, are now turning on the NRA? Now we can defend the NRA. I'll certainly do that. But this is about you and me. This is about our liberty. And that's why it's important to talk about first principles. That is from Mark Levine. Um... What's that? Dun, 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 dun. I can't see who did that. Yep. True, Beetle, 9 out of 10 are in denial. And I'm not talking that place over in Egypt. So, okay, this looks... F uh, 
in their tasty tidbits over here on the pig, this says it all. There ain't no magazine named Northern Living for a good reason. And there ain't nobody interested in living up north. Nobody would buy the magazine. Southerners know their sum, uh, summer weather report is humidity, humidity, humidity. Southerners know their vacation spots, the beach, the river, the creek. Southerners know everybody's first name, honey, darling, sugar. I, I'm not a southerner, but that one's true. Southerners know the movies that speak to their hearts, like fried green tomatoes. Driving Miss Daisy, Sweet Magnolias, and Gone with the Wind. Oh, my dear, I believe I've got the vapors. That's the wind she's talking about. <laughs> Southerners know about their religions, Baptist, Methodist, and football. You forgot NASCAR. Southerners know their cities dripping with southern charm, like Charleston and Savannah and Fort Worth, and Nolens, and Atlanta. Southerners know their elegant gentlemen, men in uniform, men in tuxedos, Rhett Butler. Southern girls know their prime real estate, the mall, the country club, and the beauty salon. Yeehaw! Southern girls know the three deadly sins, Having bad hair and nails, having bad manners, bless your heart, and cooking bad food. Only a southerner knows the difference between a hissy fit and a conniption fit, and that you don't have them, you pitch them, which is true. Only a southerner knows how many fish, collard greens, turnip greens, peas, beans, etc. make up a mess. I got a mess of fish. <laughs> Only a southerner can show a, or point out to you the general direction of yonder. It's over yonder. <laughs> Only a southerner knows exactly how long directly is, as in going to town, be back directly. Even southern babes know that give me some sugar is not a request for the white granular sweet substance that sits in a pretty little bowl in the middle of the table. All southerners know exactly when by and by is. They might not use the term, but they know the concept well. Only a southerner knows instinctively that the best gesture of solace for a neighbor who's got trouble is a plate of hot fried chicken and a big bowl of cold potato salad. If the neighbor's trouble is a real cri crisis, they also know to add a large banana pudding. Only southerners grow up knowing the difference between right near and right far peace. They also know that just down the road can be one mile or twenty. Only a southerner both knows and understands the difference between redneck, good old boy, and po white trash. No true southerner would ever assume that the car with the flashing turning signal is actually going to make a turn. A southerner knows that fixin' can be used as a noun, a verb, and an adverb. A southerner makes friends while standing in line. And when we're in line, we talk to everybody. Put 100 southerners in a room and half of them will discover they're related, even if only by marriage. In the South, y'all is singular and y'all is plural. <laughs> Southerners know grits come from corn and how to eat them. Every Southerner knows that tomatoes with eggs, bacon, grits, and coffee is perfectly wonderful. That red-eye gravy is also a breakfast food. That scrambled eggs just ain't right without Tabasco. And that fried green tomatoes are not a breakfast food. When you hear someone say, 
Well, I caught myself looking. You know you're in the presence of a genuine Southerner. Only true Southerners say sweet tea and sweet milk. Sweet tea indicates the need of sugar, for sugar and lots of it. We do not like our tea unsweetened. And sweet milk means you don't want buttermilk. And a true southerner knows that you don't scream obscenities at little old ladies who drive 30 mile an hour on the high or on the freeway. You just say, bless her little heart, and you go on your own way. To those of you who are still a little embarrassed by your southernness, take two tent revivals and a dose of sausage gravy and call me in the morning, bless your heart. Southern girls know men may come and go, but friends are forever. And to those of you who are still having a hard time understanding all this Southern stuff, well, bless your hearts. Here's, they're fixing to have classes on Southernness at, as a second language. Now, sugar, send this to someone who's been raised in the South or wish that they'd been. And if you're a northern transplant, well, bless your heart, fake it. We know you got here as fast as you could. <laughs> that was fun. I love them southerners. What's a southern? Tabasco on scrambled eggs? No. Well, that is a southern thing if you're talking like Louisiana. I know some people down from Louisiana that like their, their scrambled eggs with... Uh, Tabasco sauce. I prefer my scrambled eggs with cheese and salsa myself, but I'm a Kansas girl, so go figure. <laughs> but it is a southern thing for me. So, um, San Diego, they might do it too. You never know. Them people out there in California are crazy. So, um... Okay, this date in history. I'll probably ought to get to this. The uh, 28th of February. It's the last day of February unless you're in leap year and then it's not. But 28th of February, 1692. 46 years after Massachusetts supernaturalist tribe uh, Roger Scott for sleeping in church, Sam, uh, Salem Funsters take their legendary tolerance to the next level by launching the Salem witch hunt. Well, isn't that just special? And this date in history, the 28th of February, 1956, computer technology takes a giant leap forward thanks to J.W. Forrester's patent, replaced existing slow memory which a mu with a much faster magnetic core memory. And it's just been downhill ever since. What? Hambos need to breed law. Anyone can spawn, but those who are least prepared for parenthood are the ones who most likely play uh, reproduction roulette with the human gene pool. I think I read that one already. Hmm. Oh, you piggy guys, you're so funny. Go on over to Pig Gazette, PIGazette.com, by the way. There's all kinds of fun stuff over here. Tell them that Grammy sent you, or Pigster Grammy, as I'm known by them, and uh, say hey. Check out some of the links on the side. They got all kinds of fun links over here. And check out the artwork. Porcus is the one that did all the artwork. He's amazing, I tell you. He's amazing. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to go now? Now that I've been to the pig and i still got time left. So, so, should I check my pocket or should I, let me check the chat first. Um, dun, 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 dun. Pico Paco or Pico Paca? Pico Pica. What the, what the hell is that? <laughs> And yes, Frumpy, I do like cheese and fried onions as well. But you know what's really good is cheese, fried onions, and fried potatoes with your strangled eggs, and then put salsa on top. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Now I'm really getting hungry. <laughs> oh, oh, is that a? It's a Mexican hot sauce. No, I don't think I want the really hot stuff, hun. Um, 
Let's see. Where do I want to go next? Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah, let's go here. Uh, this is from naturalnews.com. I should be able to get done with it. Ex-opioid addict starts online campaign against billionaire family behind... Um, I had the little subscribe thing pop up. Behind Oxycontin, their company, Purdue Pharma, has made billions off of opioids. Billions, I tell you. Okay, so. Booyah. Nail him. Yes, I see the thing flashing. What? Tastiest hot, hot sauce there is? No, I like my El Zarape salsa. It's restaurant style salsa, so it doesn't have the chunkies in it, which my, both of my daughters like it that way. Basically, you take regular salsa and you puree it. But um, it's very, very tasty. I like it. They have a mild version. I would do the mild version. <laughs> okay, back to the natural news thing. So, world-renowned and distinguished photographer Nan Golden is using her art to yet again expose the hidden truths of an unreported world. This time in lambasting the billionaire family responsible for the pain relief drug oxycotin. Golden, a recovering drug addict, says that the Sackler family has turned a blind eye to the growing epidemic of drug abuse happening in our country and in most of the Western world. Oh, sweetheart, they are not turning a blind eye. They, were, they are looking at that and they're going, how are we going to figure out how to get repeat customers if we keep killing them off? Oh, look, our bank account just increased fivefold again. Ah! Customers come and go. We'll get more. That's, yeah, they, they, they aren't turning a blind eye. They're looking at their pocketbook. In a sardonic interview with The Guardian in late January, Golden describes the philanthropic family as one that is not being held accountable for the millions of lives ruined by drug addiction. The Sacklers are one of the richest families in the U.S. and are regular patrons of the arts. Sure, they're patrons of the arts, you know why they're patrons of the arts? Because they can afford to. Because doctors keep taking their little payouts and prescribing their shit. Hold the doctors accountable too, sweetie. And the pharmacist, by the way. Those um, disease management dispensaries. Yeah, that's what they are. Golden has created a campaign to shame the family into paying for the rehabilitation and overdose antidotes of affected Americans instead of shamelessly donating their ill-gotten earnings into museums and other art endeavors. You know what? They're probably also paying under the table, by the way, the FDA to tr do everything possible to keep Creighton out of reach. Yeah, because they're such giving people. Her online petition has been posted on change.org and Golden is encouraging everyone to begin using the hashtag shame on Sackler. Golden is also asking museums and universities who benefit from Sackler donations to refuse associating with the family henceforth. <laughs> oh, sweetheart, you're hitting them in the pocketbook. Ah, oh, they're, you know, they may be claim to be for the public but y you hit them in the pocketbook and they're going to go uh, no no yeah apparently the overall campaign is being called prescription addiction intervention now or pain hey that's catchy pain which they are working on the slackers were definitely not or the sacklers were definitely not slackers most of you probably unfamiliar with the Sacklers unless you visited museums. As mentioned, the family is prominent in the art scene and have continually given generous donations to various museums. 
the most prominent being the Metropolitan Museum in New York. That said, the family earned its wealth by helming Purdue Pharmaceuticals, the company behind the revolutionary and highly addictive painkiller Oxycontin. In 1995, they aggressively marketed the painkiller as a drug that was legal, safe, and concentrated. Yeah, a special concentrated formula. Don't pay for all that other shit. We've got concentrated. It takes less to get you hooked. Oxycotin was said to have a unique formula. It neeks right up on you and wipes your ass out. <laughs> One that involved a slow release mechanism that allowed patients to be free of pain longer and on a steadier onset. It was brilliant. The marketing for the drug was simply phenomenal. And Oxycotin began being routinely prescribed to patients and given freely, like Tic Tacs. You have a boo-boo, have an Oxycotin. What Purdue failed to mention is that the painkiller was not appropriate as a long-term solution to chronic pain and that it was highly addictive. And I got to tell you, chronic pain is usually an indication that you got something else wrong that you need to deal with. And just covering the symptom is not going to make the initial ailment go away. To fully understand the brilliance of the marketing of Purdue, you must remember that in the early 1990s, doctors were incredibly wary of opioids. Clinical trials at the time suggested that the drug was effective, but also extremely dangerous. The active ingredient of oxycotin, especially oxycodone, was a chemical cousin to heroin and was noted to be twice as powerful as morphine. Drugs as strong as these were only given, and even then reluctantly, as end-of-life palliative palliative care, like my former father-in-law, bless his heart, rest his soul. So, this did not stop the Sacklers who began enchanting doctors with their new miraculous drug. Doctors were whined and dined, bribed, or simply lied to about the negative effects of oxycotin probably had somebody performing well under a desk as well. Concerns about opioid addiction were poo-pooed, and sales representatives just hiked that skirt a little bit higher. Yeah, and they painted oxycotin as the one drug that could save millions of people from excruciating pain. Sure, it would put you out of your misery soon enough. So who could resist? Since 1999, it's estimated that 200,000 Americans have died from oxycotin or other prescription opioids. Addicts who could no longer afford oxycotin typically transition to heroin, tripling the number of, number of people who become addicted to and are dying from illegal drugs. How's that war on drugs working out for you, by the way? The latest figures from the Centers for Disease Control, and yes, they control the diseases, they make sure that they're meted out in just a manner that is most profitable for them because they own several patents, don't you know? And they suggest that 145 Americans die every day from an opioid overdose. Every day, 145 Americans. Mm, where's the people marching on that? While the types of drugs being abused are varied, many health officials believe that oxycotin was and is the core of the painkiller addiction. <sighs> Yay. Isn't that just special? So, seriously people, if you have an excruciating pain, don't just go to your doctor and ask for a prescription because that's not going to make the cause of that pain go away. <laughs> Dirty mind frumpy? Me? <laughs>
Why, whatever do you mean? <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, um, hmm. Now I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh my goodness. I am so glad it's towards the end of the show. Um, let's see, what else can I find here real quick? I'll remember what I was saying probably tomorrow sometime. And it'll be too late because I'll be, I'll probably say something to Lisa B and we'll just laugh like crazy while we're consuming our Bilderberger. 25 different things you can put on. Did I tell you that? You could even put a fried egg on it if you want to. Seriously. On a burger. It's like amazing. Hi. <laughs> oh, Michael has a troll hunter. Hi, Michael. I see you over here on the effing site. Oh, so let's see. We'll do that one. Yeah, because there's lots and lots of money to be made by Big Pharma. And by doctors. People that, oh yeah, I know what I was saying. Yeah, um, you know, if you're having a um, some kind of mysterious pain or something, go to a homeopath or a naturopath or a nutritionist or a chiropractor and explain to them what's going on before you go to a general practitioner or whatever because they will actually try and get to the root cause of your problem as opposed to masking it with opioids. You know, and if your problem is that you are addicted to opioids, maybe they will direct you in the direction of Kratom, which will help you get away from that shit, from what I understand. I'm not, I've never tried it, but I've never tried opioids either, so there you go. I think the strongest strongest pain pillar pain pill I ever took which maybe it is an opioid I don't know it was Tylenol 3 I took one and it was like no we ain't going there again and that was because I had yeah I had to have a tooth pulled because it was abscessed and it was bad it was bad but okay let me see Dun, dun, dun. I'm trying to check and see if I got anything else really fast. And it's not looking like I do. Huh. Um. Hmm. I'm not finding any fun little things. Let me go check what's going on over on Mines. Or maybe, hey, maybe I can just read some of the headlines here. That could be fun. Uh. Thank you, cowboy, for reminding the homeschooling is not a crime. I appreciate that, sweetie. And American Pie as well. Y'all go over to Mines, too. It really is a pretty cool, pretty cool place. Uh, crazy people don't know that they're crazy. I know I'm crazy, therefore I'm not crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy. I'm just insane. There's a difference. Let me tell ya. Okay. Uh, dun, dun, dun. So, what's going on over here on F and Sight? I know. I have a couple minutes and I don't want to leave early. So, I'm scrolling. Because <laughs> I really didn't see anything in my pocket that was a quickie. Quickie! Hi, Bobby! I see you over here on the F and Sight. Um, YouTube secretly using SPLC to police videos from uh, from the Trenches World Report. Ah, go figure. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. By the way, apparently I pissed off the Facebook gods this morning. I was trying to, because, um, oh, may my stalkers be fruitful and happy and bring me many gifts. Ooh. <laughs> well, that could be interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, where was I at now? I'm lost. <laughs> oh, well, I probably ought to just get the heck out of here. Because I am getting hungry. Maybe that's why my brain is fried. I got rumblies in the tumbly. And so it's it's time to get something to eat. So thank you all for listening in to the rocket chair the, on this wacka, 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 wacka doodle Wednesday. I will be back on Friday to kick off the Freaker Friday festivities. 
with the Freaker Friday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. Um, but until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your Wednesday and Thursday in case I'm busy throughout the work because, you know, they actually expect me to earn my paycheck. Go figure. And uh, tomorrow night, I ain't going to be on the computer because I'm going to be having some girlfriend time. So if I don't see you, just remember, I really do love you all. May not like what you're doing may not like what you're saying, but I still love you. You serve a purpose, and I appreciate that. And I truly do wish you all enough, but I just remembered one other thing that I need to look at and share this with you, because this is something that I think is very appropriate for all of us if we, if we actually do this. Mirror, mirror on the wall, I'll always rise after I fall. And whether I run, walk, or crawl, I'll set my goals and achieve them all. Something that maybe you ought to think about. I'm going to put that on a mirror here at my house. But, once again, y'all have an absolutely amazing evening. I will catch y'all in the funny papers. See ya, love ya. Bye-bye.